I'm Dr. Stephen Hodak, Chief Medical Officer and co-founder of thyroidparathyroid.com. And if you're an otherwise healthy adult with high blood calcium or hypercalcemia, you probably have primary hyperparathyroidism. And that's what we'll discuss in this video tutorial. Hyperparathyroidism is due to overactivity of one or more of the typically four parathyroid glands located behind the thyroid. And though the names are similar, the thyroid and parathyroid glands have completely different functions. The thyroid is the master metabolic regulator of the body, but the parathyroid glands control your body's calcium level, which is probably more important than you realize. You may already know that calcium is important for bone health, but calcium also regulates nerve and muscle function, and abnormal blood calcium levels can cause many serious medical problems. The hormone produced by the parathyroid glands is called parathyroid hormone, also known as PTH. And PTH is always increased in hyperparathyroidism. However, there are several types of hyperparathyroidism, and it's the calcium level, not the PTH, that determines which type of hyperparathyroidism you have. The word primary in primary hyperparathyroidism refers to the fact that the abnormality is in the parathyroid gland itself and not due to a problem that raises PTH for another reason. When that happens, it's called secondary hyperparathyroidism and we'll talk about that in another tutorial. The symptoms of hyperparathyroidism can include fatigue, confusion, constipation, and abdominal pain, and because calcium flow through the kidney is often increased, hyperparathyroidism can also cause kidney stones and kidney injury. But increased PTH can also be harmful. It increases bone loss, which can cause or worsen osteoporosis, and increase your risk of fracture. And that can be a serious medical problem, especially as we age. Symptoms of hyperparathyroidism can range from mild to severe, depending on how overactive the parathyroid glands are and how high the calcium rises. But whether the symptoms are severe or not, the diagnosis of hyperparathyroidism is always based on blood and urine tests. These are usually sufficient to establish the diagnosis as well as to exclude other causes of hypercalcemia and elevated PTH. Primary hyperparathyroidism occurs in about 1 in 100,000 adults annually, but the prevalence increases as we age, occurs about twice as often in women, and may occur in as many as 1 in 200 women following their menopause. Though primary hyperparathyroidism typically occurs in older patients, when it occurs in younger patients or in those who also have other rare endocrine tumors, an endocrine tumor syndrome may be present. These can occur with pituitary tumors in the brain, tumors of the pancreas, and medullary thyroid cancer. And these tumor syndromes are heritable, which means they run in families. If an endocrine tumor syndrome is suspected, additional blood and specialized genetic tests will usually be necessary to confirm the diagnosis. So if you're younger than age 50, or if you have a personal or family history of other endocrine tumors, be sure to discuss this with your doctor and get any additional specialized testing that you need. If you do have primary hyperparathyroidism, check our next tutorial to learn about treatment. Hyperparathyroidism may require parathyroid surgery, but can sometimes be managed just with simple observation. Keep watching to find out whether this approach may be right for you.